Tomorrow, it will be this, a 5K race. I believe LaDainian Tomlinson will be running in it. I think he always does. Uh, still time to get in. You can help out uh, Tomlinson's Touching Lives Foundation. And there's how you register, lt5k.com. And speaking of said 5K, I am joined now by Paralympic soccer player Mason Abiati. Mason, uh, you were going to run Saturday. Yes. But you came up lame. Explain. Yep. Uh, I was in a training camp, uh, training last week, and got a little knock, a little knee injury. Uh, went to the MRI yesterday, the other day, and turns out I have a bit of a knee bruise. So you're not running, but you'll be there to help out and to encourage other runners, correct? Yes. All right. So you're a member of the Apparel Olympic team. Please tell people your story, uh, starting, I guess, at birth. Yeah, I was born 28 weeks premature, um, diagnosed with cerebral palsy, which is muscle coordination at age one. Um, numerous surgeries throughout my lifetime and still am going on with it. And so, but you're a member of the team. We'll get to that in a second. I'm just curious, how did you get involved in the 5K then? Why, why, why were you going to be part of that? Um, I had gotten a text message from Aaron Susi, uh, former San Diego soccer player. Yes, player. former San Diego soccer player. Um, I had saw there was an image, so I clicked on it and it said LT5K um, discount for US Paralympic soccer team. I was a bit confused, um, so I texted him and said, Well, what is this? He said, Oh, we'd love to have you come down, sign some things. Be so I said, Okay, yeah. All right, uh, so assuming you're healthy, would you be able to beat LT? We'll see. What's your best 5K time? Uh, maybe eight, seven, eight minutes. Per, so per, per mile? Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you, yeah, you'd beat him. I mean, he's he's old now. Uh, <laughs> well, well, let's well, let's get away from that. Let's talk about being a member. I know as a soccer player, you've worn a lot of jerseys, but wearing something like this with the United States emblem on it, can you talk about what it means to represent your country? I don't care if it's tiddlywinks, but be a member of the Paralympic soccer team. The first time um, I had thought or knew about this, I was very surprised and quite didn't know much about it until uh, I went down for a training camp in San Diego. Uh, this was about three years ago, um, and went and tried out for the team. Um, and went with the team to Portugal for my first tournament. Wow. So. Well, so when the national anthem plays, how do you keep the tears out of your eyes? Uh, goosebumps, tears, joyful, and just proud to represent. So, I, I, guys, I'm, I'm Mike, I might have gone out of order here, but there's a picture I want to show of, of Mason holding up two photos. That, that photo right there, when you see that image of you as a kid, and then I was a soccer. What, what does that image mean to you? That's a long road you've over, overcome. Yeah, I've I've overcome many obstacles in my lifetime. Uh, still do. I'm 18, um, so it's it's definitely a heartfelt moment looking back at pictures of me when I was little, um, and representing my country playing soccer. And yeah. So would you be sitting here? We have a mutual friend in the Mighty Quinn. Yes. And he played a role in your life. Uh, can you explain why you might not be sitting here if not for the, the Mighty Quinn? Uh, Quinn, he uh, he knows the head coach of the Paralympic team, uh, soccer team, and he brought me up in a conversation, uh, and the head coach wanted me to come down to try out, so I did, and then I was invited to go to Portugal with the team, so if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here with this jacket on representing the country. He's a pretty uh, connected person. Uh, have you ever been on, have you ever been c training under him? I mean, he's pretty fit still, is he not? Yeah. Can he still get up and down the pitch? Oh, yeah. All right, so uh, a lot of aspiring athletes have sat in this chair, and I always ask them the same thing. There are other people with, with your afflictions such as yours, some worse, some not, not as bad and some don't reach the level of success you have. So look into that camera right there and speak to those, this one right here, and tell them, what's your message to young people out there? Um, the message I have for kids, adults, whoever it may be, is three words, never give up. No matter where you're coming from, no matter what issues you have in your life, what, no matter what you've dealt with, never give up, and everything will be okay. Speaking of never giving up, uh, my colleague, Rick Willis, was an opponent of yours in uh -huh. the soccer's celebrity uh, halftime game. Uh, you played against him. He, he had a lasting impression of you. He said, God, the guy's a ghost. I, you, you, one second he's here, one second he's gone. 
What is your impressions of playing with Rick Willis? I'd be interested in knowing. I have never met somebody so sweaty. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, well, we have the same problem in the office with him. Uh, you know, there's an ongoing debate as... <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. There is, uh, there is an ongoing debate between club sports and high school sports. You're a proponent of club sports, I'm guessing, yes. right? Can you be an elite soccer player or elite volleyball player without participating in club sports? I think participating in club sports and high school sports at the same time will get you to achieve more. Um, being in high school sports alone, yes, it's fun, but Just being on the club side, you can achieve more. You have to play the better, yeah. in the better, and the more you're around coaching. All right, well, just quickly, that 5K race is coming up. Uh, Mason will be there. Meet Mason. He's an inspiring young man. And speaking of Mason, this is Mason 1. Mason 2 comes up in the 6 o'clock hour of the Sports Watchdog. Hope you tune in.